Okay, so sea cucumbers eat dead and decaying stuff. Does that make them the raccoons of the deep sea? <laughs> They're more like earthworms, I would say. Hi everyone, my name is Liz Miller. Um, I use they, them pronouns. Um, and I'm currently a PhD student at University of Hawaii at Manoa, um, where I'm studying deep sea ecology, specifically looking at uh, gut microbiomes of sea cucumbers and sea urchins and other animals that we call deposit feeders. Okay, so if you were describing a sea cucumber to someone who had never seen it before, um, how would you describe <laughs> a sea cucumber as an animal? I think if I was talking specifically about deep sea sea cucumbers, because they look really different from the shallow water ones, but the deep sea ones that I focus on, um, I would say that they are sort of gummy textured. We call them gelatinous. And they come in a lot of different colors. There's some that are these really striking like purples and reds and pinks. A lot of them are very transparent. I ended up doing this project where I'm working with the guts of sea cucumbers because I, I was part of a larger project looking at what we call food webs. So that's the assemblage of animals and how what they're eating and, and looking at them specifically on what we call the abyssal plain, which is an area of the ocean that's about four to six kilometers deep. And uh, I'm part of this project with my lab at the University of Hawaii where we were looking at what these animals are eating, what kind of food sources they're using. And I was really specifically interested in the sea cucumbers and sea urchins that we were finding. And I sort of wanted to bring in something that wasn't already part of the project. And for me, that was the gut microbiomes. I think ever since I first learned about gut microbiomes, I was really interested in what they're doing and how they function. So a gut microbiome is the assemblage of microbes, so communities of bacteria, fungi, other things like that, that are living inside of the digestive tract of um, an animal. So we as humans, we have a gut microbiome. Every animal that we've ever looked at on the planet has one. And it's really important for things like digestion and breaking down a lot of different types of food that we eat. It's especially important for animals that eat things that are really hard for them to break down, that they don't have the ability, the enzymes to break down. So there's been a little bit of work done on sea cucumber gut microbiomes, but what we know is that their gut microbiomes differ from what you find in their food. So if they eat sediment, um, we call them deposit feeders. That means they just eat the mud that surrounds them. And if you look at the bacterial communities in the mud versus in their guts, they're different. And so that suggests that there is some sort of selective process happening and that there's a specialized community that's just living in the guts. So on these ROV dives, we've been looking at a lot of the different types of life that we can find um, on these same mount areas. But one of the things that we've been collecting has been sea cucumbers and sea urchins. Um, and that's specifically for the work that I'm going to be doing on their gut microbiomes. So the hypothesis there is that their gut microbiomes are going to be helping them to consume this sinking material, this detritus. So at this point in the expedition, I have close to 30 samples. I'm very, very happy with what I've been able to get. These animals, they're so understudied that even a few of a certain taxon will tell us so much that we don't know about it yet. Once the ROV is back on the deck and the ROV pilots and engineers tell us we're okay to go, we collect the animals from the various buckets and boxes that it's in, um, stick them in the fridge so that they stay cold. Then once I back in the lab, I'll take my first sample. Usually the first thing I'll do is I'll weigh it and then I'll pass it over to our really great science manager. And what she'll do is take a nice photo of it with a ruler for scale so that I can look back later and get a length measurement on whatever the animal is. And then after that, I'll start my dissection. So I try to create a relatively clean sterile environment and I'll do it on ice again to keep it cold. I uh, usually cut it open along the body trying to be careful not to pierce the the gut tract that's in there and then I'll, I'll pull out the gut tract and remove the sediment that is inside of it and then I'll also take a little bit of a sample of the tissue of the animal itself. I will run those down the hall a little bit to a freezer that we have that is at negative 80 degrees Celsius, so really, really cold. So I'll basically have a sample that when I bring it back to the lab months potentially from now, it'll look the same as what it did when I was doing the dissection. And then with the rest of the animal, I will usually preserve it in ethanol and that will be sent off to a museum where an expert will be able to look at it and get a little bit of a better idea of the identity. Sea cucumbers are cool for a lot of different reasons, um, but I think they're really cool because of just how common they are and how they're able to live in so many different habitats. You can find them from tide pools all the way down to kilometers deep in the ocean, and they're able to fulfill a lot of different habitats and environments and thri really thrive in those.